G'day. The other day I was feeling a bit bored and so I decided to make up some new uh, lathe tool holders. Now one of the things I like about the Allura style holder is that making them up is, is extremely simple. It's basically a rectangular rock with a dovetail cut into it. So uh, to add a degree of difficulty I decided to do six at once using the horizontal mill. And so this video shows the horizontal milling parts. Now unfortunately I got down to the end and I had a cutter slip and uh, although they didn't ruin the parts, um, I couldn't really do anything more with them because they wouldn't fit in my tool post. Uh, a friend of mine's got them, he's got a piston type post which will handle them. So I have to recover from that and uh, I've got a few bits and pieces I need to make before I can do that. But this is about the horizontal milling part of this. As you can see, the mill is set up in uh, horizontal mode. I've got my stock um, held in two vices. Now this one here has got keys on it and is fitted to the um, the mill table. This one I've taken the keys off the procedure being that uh, this gets clamped down and then this one does but that can float so I don't get any bends or misalignment in the, in the, in the stock. The cutter I'm going to be using for this is this one. It's called a slab cutter and uh, it's, it's one of the, the, the most, well I find it, you know, interesting things that you can do I think on a horizontal mill because you just see all these chips just pouring off. So anyway, I'm going to set that up and we're going to take a couple of passes on this. About now the microphone cable gives up on me which is a bit of a pity. But I was going to point out the, the, the weird shaped chips here. They're like a sort of a spring. Um, they're very sharp. Uh, so nasty to pick up but um, they just sort of roll off and uh, it's it's quite a, an interesting thing, thing to see uh, and if you're cutting something like aluminium uh, it's even more exciting because you, you can do a deeper cut and you get some really big ones coming off. I'm just letting everything cool down at the moment because uh, as you can imagine taking off that metal does generate some heat. I'm squirting it with uh, CRC and a bit of cutting oil just to uh, try and take some of that heat out but it still still gets hot. Um, one of the things that I really like about cutting with a slab cutter like this is the surface finish. It's quite unusual and if you can imagine having a, an end mill or something like that going through you'd have lots of, of scratches. Whereas this one, it gives you a, a sort of a uniform ripply thing. It's quite, quite pleasant. So I'm going to flip this over, machine off sort of an equal amount on the other side because whenever it's, it's good practice whenever machining bar stocked uh, to take equal amounts off because if there's stresses in the surfaces, uh, if you machine off one side heavily and not the other side, you, you, it can tend to banana a bit. So you machine equally from both sides. But I'll flip this over then, do the other side, and then I'll come back and um, do these two sides here and get that down to size. It's unfortunate that I've got to take this much off, but uh, I, the, the size that I wanted, which would have needed only a millimetre or two off each side, um, wasn't available, steel shortages and all that sort of thing, so I'm having to make do with this lump of bar, but at least it means I get the slab cutter out. I've managed to get my stock down to size, it's gone from inch and a half square down to uh, inch and a quarter by inch and three quarters. A lot of material to waste, but uh, as I said before, it, uh, sometimes you, you can't get what you need and so you've got to take it down. I can tell you that these chips aren't fun to try and clean up. Um, they have a very sharp edge on them, or sharp end on them, and so it's like picking up a handful of pins. It's wonderful stuff. Uh, just to, to give an illustration of uh, how much swarf was uh, taken off here. I just finished putting a trench in with a half inch cutter. When I'm trying to put a, a slot in of a particular size with a, with a milling cutter, whether it's an end mill or, or a, slitting cutter, a slotting, slitting saw like this, um, I'll run it down the middle and then offset it, hopefully equally either side, to try and get that final size. This 
This is another one of those setups that you prefer not to have to do, but sometimes you have to do. I've got a strip clamp down here, and this is just a strip I made up once upon a time to, for doing this sort of thing. I've got a parallel in here just to space these six blocks out. I've got a piece of pipe across the back there with some long clamps, and I'm doubling up on the bolts here to uh, hold those down. Notice too that I've got a little block up here. You don't necessarily have to use the teeth on there for the back of the clamp if you don't want to. I've got an angle plate over here, and then on one side of this angle plate, which is square to this, and this is parallel with the, um, the table travel, uh, I've got another angle plate with a uh, bit of uh, all thread reaching through. So all up I've got this thing um, stopped against there, stopped against there, held down there, held in there, um, and I'm hoping that I can now use a, uh, a cutter to face these off. Apart from running an arbor out from the spindle and then having the overarm support, this is the other way that a horizontal spindle can be used. Uh, just mounting the cutter direct into the spindle shaft and hanging the work off the back of the table. And I, I managed to um, reface a, a large uh, angle plate that I've got uh, around about 10 inches square, 250 by 250, uh, using this method just by traveling in, in uh, well, incrementing in, in uh, Z while traveling in X and leaving Y constant. Uh, I guess to, to use these things effectively, you usually want to have the spindle so that the cutting is down, pushing the work into the table. Uh, you also need to be careful of how far in you feed. The back of this cable has got a couple of scars from its previous life where uh, they were doing this sort of thing and uh, they missed. Um, but, you know, it's, it's quite a legitimate way of using a, a horizontal mill and uh, worth considering if you've, if you've got one of these um, uh, awkward sort of jobs or, or even just you're trying to do a, a whole string of parts in a row like this. With the Allura style tool post there are, there are two styles of uh, tool post. One is the wedge type which is the type I've got and what that does is as the name suggests You've got a flat surface there and there, you've got one in there and one in there, and this wedges apart and clamps the, the, the tool holder that way. The other style is, is what's referred to as a piston style. Uh, a lot of the import, uh, cheaper imports are, are this style. They say the wedge is slightly better, but it's probably not noticeable for, for what we do. The way they work is they have the inside of the dovetail on here, and then they push against that surface, and so it basically pushes against there and there and there, and so it's, it's, it's pulling. Now, I guess from that point of view, I'd prefer to have something that's, that's on, on these surfaces and, and those two surfaces rather than that surface, that surface, and a, a point on there, but that's beside the point. So how do you measure these things? The nice thing is if I measure between those two dowels here, I zero my calipers, and then I come across to the, the part that I'm making, and this, uh, I can then measure that, and, and once I get the same reading I know that the dowel to dowel, and so therefore the, the two angles are the same, and because you're feeding that way it means you've got a direct relationship. So here I'm saying, if, if for example this was saying, well this is saying that I'm, I'm 0.03 of a millimetre over, but if I was say uh, 0.4 of a millimetre under, I could just feed my uh, dovetail cutter across that 0.4. And with the wedge style post it's this surface plus those surfaces. Now that is not going to be sharp and so you can't necessarily rely on that. So what I've, what I've come up with are these two blocks and they've just got the dovetail form in there. Um, I set these up, I indicated off the back surface to make sure it was parallel with my direction of feed so I know that this surface should be parallel with, with the, the dovetail. Okay? And that gives me a relative internal corner. So once again, come here, zero, go to my sample that I'm, I'm making up, zero again, and that says I'm 0.06 of a millimeter out. Okay, so that's basically measuring dovetails.
here's the aftershot of where things went pear-shaped. Uh, I tried to clean it up, but as you can see, it didn't quite work well enough. Anyway, I hope this has shown people what uh, horizontal milling can do and uh, given people a few ideas. Uh, I'll be getting back onto these once I've got a bit of tooling made, so we'll uh, see you for that one.